Okay, here's one of the YPZ clutches that we all love so much on the earlier exciters, phasers, things like that. Here's the X that needs to line up with another X on the cover when you assemble it. You may not see that too well. On the YXR clutch, right there, on the cover, right there. Now this clutch has a bad roller bushing. I don't know if I'll be able to get you to see this, but it's got a lot of movement there. When those are bad, not only does it not shift smoothly, but you don't get even belt pressure. So you get a lot of slippage and a lot of wear being transferred to other parts of the clutch. One of them will actually be this bushing here. You start to get a lot of wear on that. Um, this is a piece that if you want to use a little bit of dry graphite lube or something on it, you can. It's not necessary. Sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit here. The clutch weight, this one's actually in pretty good shape. It's got a little bit of notching happening there. Not the greatest, it just kind of holds the shift a little bit. Or the engagement, I should say. You can tell there's really not much play in there. That one's still good. That one's good. Here's another roller bushing that's definitely marginal. I'm going to want to replace the that one as well. Yeah, that way it's looking a little bit worse than the others. Might not hurt to do the bushing on that as well. This roller is actually in good shape. Here's my dog. This is Tally. She wants to help, I guess. Okay, secondary clutch. This is the tool that actually makes your life really easy because you can just depress the helix to get the snap ring off. Since not everybody has this, I'm going to get down on the ground and show you how I've done it in the past. Well, I think Tally's going to help us again here. <laughs> what I do is I get my knee on here. Just give it a little nudge. I don't know if you saw how that twisted. Uh, playtime here with my dog. We're going to have to pause this. Okay, let's try this again. So the snap ring comes right off. Slowly release the helix. It is under torsional pressure. Here's your Markings, slot one, two, three, four. And then you have A, B, C inside here. Sorry, I'm not professional at making videos. Probably can't see the ramps very good here. These are actually in pretty decent shape. Um, if they really start getting grooved, you can sand them down, make them smooth again. Um, you know, if they get worn too much, they are going to start to damage the, the secondary, but these things after one ride will be broken, so these are fine to run. 
you can grease inside there. That rides on this shaft here with a brand new belt. You should have two shims. What I usually do is have a new belt and a brand new spare belt, run the two shims, keep running those, swap both belts until they're, they wear at the same rate. Um, when they're both ready to, basically um, when you need to take one of the shims out, then you'll just keep both the belts adjusted the same so you don't have to worry about it if you ever do get in a situation where you need one. Sorry, that probably didn't make much sense. But. All right, reassembly. I'm using slot B2. Can be a little difficult here, one hand. Oh, I should mention I put a little bit of graphite lube on the helix as well. Whoops, got that upside down. Okay, so now you're going to want to twist this helix to go past one ramp. But you also have to get it on the splines. That actually wasn't so difficult. Put your snap ring back on. Make sure it's fully seated. There you go. Secondary is ready to be used again.